Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to SimTech channel. So in this tutorial, we're going to do a short circuit analysis using a Dig Silent uh, simulator. So you may be wondering why am I on the SimTech channel homepage? So well, we're going to use um, a tutorial that's already on the SimTech channel that we did a manual calculation of a short circuit analysis and we're going to use the same tutorial to basically do a dig silent simulation. So, so in this playlist, the first tutorial, transformer primary short circuit current. So, so if you are not familiar with short circuit analysis, all these tutorial, they will basically help you understand the basics of short circuit analysis. But before you do that, make sure that you also watch all the pay unit tutorial so that you can understand pay unit system because you cannot do a short circuit analysis before without understanding the per unit system so we're taking the first tutorial here and i'm also dropping it in the description box right so i'm going to pause the tutorial here so this is a problem statement so here basically this tutorial is explaining how to basically find a short circuit uh, current on the primary when a fault occurs on the secondary of your transformer so if you watch this tutorial, you'll understand how we were able to determine the short circuit current on the primary of the transformer when there is a presence of a fault on the secondary. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the values that we found in this tutorial. I'm just going to skip the tutorials to the values that we calculated. And let me just maximize this window again. So if you look at this tutorial, we found a short circuit current of 1.75 kilo amps. Okay, so that is a short circuit current occurring here on the primary of this transformer. Okay, and we found a line current. Okay, we found a line current. Let me just remove this subtitle here so we can see the line current. Okay, so we found a line current of 87.4 or 87.5 amps okay so that is the line current flowing right here on the primary of the transformer okay and in case of a short circuit on the secondary the fault current is 1.7 kilo amps and that fault current is directly proportional to the reactance or the per unit reactance of this transformer so that is basically the only thing that limits the current that flow through this transformer in case of a short here on the secondary okay so now we were not calculating the fault on the secondary we were calculating the fault on the primary remember this is the transformer okay so typically this is a step down transformer so which means automatically you're going to have a smaller current on a high voltage side and a higher current on the low voltage side so this short circuit current of 1.7 kilo amp is appearing on your primary here so that basically means if we were to calculate a short circuit on this secondary here it's basically going to be way 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 bigger but we can also find out on the simulation so if you want to follow along on this the, the tutorial we're going to do now on the silent uh, please familiarize with this tutorial and then let's follow along in dig silent right so first off you've got your dig silent power factory open you go on data manager right so you need to place your your project where you want to place it i'm placing mine under simtech here so i click on new right new project uh tutorial one so this is tutorial one okay i'm just going to copy this and then I say OK. Then the grid name here, I'm also just going to name it tutorial. The owner is Simtech. And then we say OK. So now we've just created a project here and it is indeed active. So now we do away with this window here. We close it. So now we come to our environment where we're going to start putting the puzzle together. So the first thing here, we need a bus bar. So if you look at this circuit here, right? So this circuit here is basically, we just need uh, what? We need to hook up a transformer on a bus bar, uh, the primary on a bus bar, and the secondary on a bus bar. 
Now, remember, we need a generator because a transformer without the source is basically useless. We need a source, so we're going to have to import a generator into our system. Okay, but we have to ensure that a generator that we're bringing in is also a 33 kilovolt. We cannot put uh, uh, a 220 kilovolt generator while our primary here is 33 kilovolt, then we'll have problems. Okay, so we bring in a bus bar. Okay, so our bus bar, bus bar one, and we've got bus bar two in. Okay. So now the second thing to do is we're going to have to import a synchronous machine here. So we bring a synchronous generator. So I'm just going to click on the bus bar. Okay, then I'm going to choose cubicles one here. That's where I connect my bus bar. Then to place your generator on the top, all you have to do is to click on it. Right, right click and you have to select on flip at bus bar. Okay, then your generator goes way up. So now the second thing to do now is to bring in your transformer. So we're going to pick up our three-phase transformer there. Okay, then we're going to connect it on the second cubicles here. And on bus bar 2, it's going on the first cubicles. So we just connect him right there. Now we've got the connection basically done. Now we can now go ahead and start inputting the parameters that we need. So first off, I click on the generator. We can change the name here. I'm going to say G1. Okay. Then uh, it's a generator. The plant category here, yeah, you can put it call. It's not going to matter. You can choose anything here. Okay. Now, um, now the type, you can either choose a global type if it's already on your library or you can just create a new type here okay so you go to synchronous machine type then uh, the apparent power i'm gonna say 400 mega volt ampere so this is the capacity of this generator so it's a big generator and the nominal voltage the nominal voltage must be 33 kilovolt make sure it's the same voltage as the primary of your transformer to avoid uh, to start getting errors then the power factor uh, 95 percent okay then you say okay now at this point here you can come to load flow here now this is where you select whether it's a reference machine on a slack bus or what have you so we only having one machine here it doesn't really matter it's just one generator but it's always good to select it as a reference machine it will change to a slack bus and then you choose here voltage then you're going to have your voltage to be one per unit or if you want to change it and the angle is always going to be the zero degree for the reference machine okay and the rest of the stuff you can leave it as is unless you want to get very complicated with it then we press okay okay so now you move to the second parameter which is your bus bar now here on the bus bar remember you have just to ensure that the bus bar got the same voltage with the generators so we're going to change this one to be 33 okay and on the basic data here line we also put it 33 then we're going to also choose here a new type and here no additional data required but for basics i'm going to put here a 33 kilovolt it's a bus bar type now here i'm gonna just change this to bus bar one okay just gonna change that name to bus bar one and then we say okay uh yes we say okay okay so now we have bus bar one now we move to the next parameters here is what the transformer now remember according to our tutorial here the transformer is what 33 kilovolt on this primary and 400 volt on the secondary three phase and it has a reactance of five percent that is a per unit reactance of five percent so that's all we need here so we're going to come here now into our transformer okay so we select the new type okay we select a new type here or 
you can also choose a global type if you want to you can choose from these transformers here but uh, i'm going to just create a new project type here now from here the first parameter is the rating of the transformer again onto our tutorial we can see that the rating is 5000 kilovolt ampere so that basically 5 mva so just replace the one with the five the frequency remain the same now the low voltage the high voltage side is 33 and the low voltage is 400 kilovolt which is 0 0,4 volt okay so you've got your 0 0,4 volt on the low voltage side and it's a a star with a neutral right it's a three phase star with a neutral on both sides so there is no problem there you can also see the problem statement here say it's a star star three phase okay so it's a star star three phase and we're going to leave the phase shift to zero degree no problem and this is our vector grouping for our transformer now we come to this section which is a very important section so you have now to select the arrow right and from here the positive sequence right the positive sequence representation just choose the reactance in per unit okay reactance in in per unit now remember the problem statement says five percent which is 0 0.05 so you just hit your five percent there now on the zero sequence here you can basically just leave it zero okay you don't need need to put anything there just zero on the load flow side it's going to populate the data automatically but this is basically all you need for these transformers then you're going to say okay and whoa what do we have here inconsistent data violated conditions voltage at pass part terminal hv side is less than low voltage side so basically the bus bar voltage on the high voltage side is less on the low voltage side hmm okay let's just let's just double check here quickly so that's correct that's correct everything is correct here okay so what's a problem hmm okay this is talking about bus bar not a transformer okay so i think i've got an idea of what's a problem here so unfortunately we that we then we have to cancel because okay is not working we must cancel so i think the problem here is the high voltage bus bar got a 33 kilovolt that we just input and on the low voltage side is still default here which is 110 kilovolt and that's the problem so which means before we can configure the transformer we first need to fix this secondary pass by here okay so i'm going to change it to 0 0.4 kilovolt because that will be the voltage on our secondary okay and then i'm gonna create a new type here as well and then i'm gonna say 0 0.4 kilovolt then here it's basically bus bar 2 i think that's what we name the other one okay bus bar 2 so we say bus bar 2 there and then we say okay and notice that the 0 0.4 kilovolt is a line to line voltage so that basically tapping between the two line on your system and the line to ground or line to neutral will then give you 0 0.23 so that basically 230 volts so if you take 400 volt you divide it by the square root of 3 you're going to get a phase value that will give you 230 volt so that is your line to ground value right yes okay now let's go back into our transformer okay unfortunately now we need to start over here new type okay uh, 5 mega volt ampere 33 kilovolt and 0 0.4 kilovolt the per unit reactance is 5% and on the zero sequence is 0%. Okay. Now I think everything else here is fine. We can just go ahead and hit OK, right? It's a here to winding transformer type 2. Okay, we can rename it. It's not a problem. Uh, or leave it as is. Okay, so we say okay. 
and now okay he's happy so that was indeed the problem we needed to make sure that this voltage must also correspond to the secondary okay the same problem would have occurred if we left this to be 110 while there is actually different voltage on the generator and the transformer so you have to make sure so this just makes sense when you are doing your per unit calculation your voltages per zones are very important now we are at the point where we can actually run the short circuit analysis but before we can run the short circuit analysis if i can just maximize this window again here you'll see that the line current here right i said earlier we got 87.5 amp okay so that is the current flowing on the primary here on the primary of this transformer without any fault okay because we can see we're calculating it by using uh, the 5 megavolt ampere which was chosen as the base mva okay and the zone voltage is 33 kilovolt on this primary side and we're getting a line current of 87.5 amps okay so now i'm gonna run the simulation okay and see if we're going to find the same line current is remember this is a maximum line current that can flow here it's not a fault this is not a fault current the fault current is 1.7 kilo amp there 87 is a line current that can flow normally without the fault so in order for us to induce this current we need to connect some kind of a load here or rather maybe a short circuit on, on on the on the secondary or just a load that will draw a lot of current on the transformer so we can get that line current so what we're going to do is i'm going to just dump a load here so i'm going to connect the load onto the secondary bus bar i'm going to cubic two okay there we go and i need to enter the parameter for my load here and here we just need to come to the load flow here and it's a balanced load we don't have to be so fancy here and then we just say okay this load here is a five megawatt load we don't put any reactive power on it we just say it's a five megawatt load with a one per unit voltage so that basically it's going to pull the whole 400 volt and a five megawatt okay so that means if we run this now we are going to be pulling this transformer to its maximum capacity because this is just a five mega volt ampere transformer and we also got a five megawatt load uh, that, that is connected to it so i'm going to now run a load flow analysis to execute here and see whether we're going to get that line current so let's see okay there we go right there we go so now look look what's happening here so upon running our load flow here we can see that the current coming from the generator so this will be being pulled from the primary of the transformer you can see there is a current of 0 0.088 kilo amp 0 0.088 kilo amp is surely 88 amp and 88 amp is not too far from 87.5 amp so we are certainly within the value that we got on the calculation and if you look at on the secondary here also there is a current the load current on the secondary is 7.2 kilo amps now on this tutorial here we didn't calculate that secondary current here okay because the tutorial was just to find the primary short circuit current now you can go ahead and try to find the secondary current so all you have to basically do to find that secondary current will be to basically use this same formula right the same formula we got 87.5 this time around you must replace the 33 here with the 400 volt the 33 kilovolt with the 400 volt then you should be able to get that uh 7.2 kilo amps that we are seeing here on the silent right now it seems like our circuit parameters are so far verifying so now we're going to run away from the normal load here we're going to now induce the a fault on the secondary bus bar so that we can see if we can get this current of 1.7 kilo amps so to do that i'm going to click on the bus bar and i'm going to say calculate a short circuit okay now 
Remember, the problem statement also say here, calculate the primary current and short circuit KVA if short circuit of zero impedance occurs. A short circuit of zero impedance basically means that there is no impedance whatsoever on the short circuit path. So basically the whole current is just shorting. There is no impedance to even try to reduce that short circuit current. So it's a zero impedance. So that's basically what it means. So what it means in terms of the simulation here, you don't have to enter any value here because any value that you enter here will basically be the fault impedance that will basically just reduce your, your, your short circuit current. So let's go ahead and just execute the short circuit analysis. Okay, so when we run the short circuit analysis, look at it. We are basically getting the exact values, right? The exact values that we calculated, okay? Look at on the primary. Don't look at the secondary. The secondary, that's a different story. Like I said earlier, the short circuit current on the secondary is not going to be the same with the short circuit current on the primary because the secondary have a lower voltage, so the current will go up. Okay, that is to maintain the transformer properties. Okay, KVA in, KVA out. So we reduce the voltage, we increase the current. So here the short circuit current is 148.5 kilo amps. Okay, so let's let let me just double click on this generator here and see if I can change the rating of this generator so let me just say this is maybe a 300 mva okay and then run this analysis again let's go execute there we go so it is indeed going down let's reduce this generator capacity to 200 MVA instead of a 400 MVA. It is a slack generator. So by setting the value to 200 MVA, we can then run our simulation again. Okay, we execute. Everything remain the same here and then we execute and then let's see the fault current. So now we're getting a fault current that is 1.7 kilo amps and the MVA here is 97.9. So now if you look at the short circuit MVA that we calculated here, we basically got about 100, actually 100 MVA, okay? And the current was 1.75 kilo amps, okay? Short circuit current. Now look at what we are getting here on the primary of the transformer. 97.9 MVA, which is basically 100 MVA, and the current 1.7 kilo amps. So, the values they basically they do verify they confirm that the calculation that we did on that tutorial is verifying with the short circuit analysis running dig silent thank you guys for watching if you've liked this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe to simtech channel and stay tuned for more tutorial and you can see that the short circuit current here we're getting on the secondary is 141 kilo amps now you can take this uh, tutorial further by basically calculating okay your short circuit current on the secondary all you have to do is first to get the line current on the secondary and when you get the line current on the secondary which we've already proven by running the the, the load flow analysis here we can see that the line current on the secondary is 7.2 kilo amps so if you get that line current on the secondary of 7.2 kilo amps then you can multiply it with the per unit current which will remain the same because remember that is based on your transformer reactance per unit reactance and you're going to find that short circuit current on the secondary that we are displaying here of 140 uh what this is 141. You might get a value that's slightly higher or lower, but it will be very much uh, around the same magnitude. So that is it, guys. Uh, once again, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more uh, load flow analysis uh, coming your way. Until next time, cheers.